What's up everybody, David here, and welcome to the Sonar User's Guide to Studio One. Now, as you guys already know, I've recently made the switch from Sonar Platinum to Studio One, and while it was a relatively easy switch, I did hit a few roadblocks along the way. So I thought it'd be really cool to make you guys a video to help you in your transition, just in case you decide to make the same switch. But before we get into it, I wanna clarify what this video is going to be. This is not a how-to video where I'm gonna show you how to open a track or record a track or do basic editing or anything like that because there's already so many great videos covering those more basic topics already on YouTube. This is rather a collection of tips and tricks to help make your transition a little bit easier. This is gonna be anything from small functions that work differently in Studio One than they did in Sonar, or even big functions that are completely missing in Studio One, but I found workarounds for. All of these tips and tricks are real things that I encountered in my Switch, so hopefully it'll help you guys out as well. Now that we got that out of the way, let's get started. All right, so the first one we have here is clicking and dragging to select a track. So in Sonar, we could click on the track number and simply drag down as far as we want, and it would select all of those tracks. In Studio One, that is non-existent, so your best friend is gonna be click, shift, click. So that means click on the first track, hold shift, and click on the last track, and it'll select all of the tracks in between. Now one thing to keep in mind here is when you're clicking to select the tracks, do not click on the track number because that's gonna pull up the channel editor. Instead, click on the track name, and that's going to be a lot better for selecting because you're gonna accidentally pull up this channel editor a lot and you're gonna hate your life. The silver lining though is that the drag to mute, solo, and record is still there. So you can still arm multiple tracks or solo or mute multiple tracks with the easy swipe. Next is selecting multiple clips inside of the track pane or project window or whatever you wanna call it. So in Sonar, if you wanted to select more than one clip, you would select the first one, hold control, and select the next. But that doesn't work in Studio One because as you can see, once we hold control, it enables the range tool. Instead, you must click the first one, hold shift, and then click the second one. So shift is gonna be your main tool for selecting multiple things all at once. Next, we have double click to reset. So let's say you wanna reset a fader or maybe panning back to its original position at zero. What you used to do in Sonar was double click, but in Studio One, it is actually control click. And that will put whatever you're clicking on back at the original position. So next we have nudge down. So Sonar had a feature called nudge where you can move a clip inside of a project either left or right in very small or large increments or you can move it up and down between tracks. Studio One does not have a nudge up or down. I don't know if it has left and right but I mainly used up and down because it's really convenient to move a clip between different tracks using just one keystroke. Now, before we get into this, you can just drag it. And something that Studio One does that's really cool is that when you move a track vertically, it locks it in that position unless you really try to move it left or right. So it's really easy to move a clip up and down without losing the original timing. So let's set up the nudge down. We're gonna do that by using a macro, which is essentially just telling Studio One to perform multiple commands under one single keystroke. So to set that up, we're gonna go to the Studio One tab in the toolbar, Macro Organizer, and create a brand new macro. So this is where we choose our commands and order them however we'd like and then save our macro. First thing we're gonna do is add cut. So we're gonna search cut up here, click on it, and then add to the macro. What we're telling this to do is to cut whatever clip or range we have selected. Next, we wanna type in down and add this down under the navigation section. This is saying, after we cut it, move that clip down to the next track. And then lastly, we're gonna type in paste and we're gonna put paste at original position. So this is saying, now cut it, move it down to the next track, paste at the exact same timing that it was before. So once you have all of your commands set up, all you have to do is name it and then hit okay and your macro is created. Now I'm not going to save this today because I already have macros created uh, for this purpose. So I'm just gonna show you how it works. So I have mine set up for number two and eight on the 10 key, two will nudge it down and then eight will nudge it up. Now of course, if you wanted to do this to move the track up as well, you would just have to replace the down command with the up command. I used to use this a lot in Sonar, so having these macros available to set that back up again was awesome. Next we have sound on sound recording or rather, the lack of sound on sound recording in Studio One. So in Sonar we had a really cool feature called sound on sound and if you didn't use it, it basically lets you record a new clip on top of an existing clip without deleting or muting anything. While recording over the old piece of audio, you could still hear it while playing, and then once you were done, the clips just simply overlapped each other. Nothing was muted, deleted, everything was intact. 
I got very used to this recording workflow and upon switching to Studio One I realized that it does not allow that. Anytime you record over an existing clip the old audio will be replaced. So for example if I arm this, record over it, the old audio is gone whereas in Sonar this audio still used to be intact. Now in Studio One I've actually found a workaround or a different workflow that I actually prefer and that I like more than sound on sound in Sonar. And that's basically recording all your takes onto a separate track and then moving them down onto the intended track. So let's take this bass track for example. I have a blank track sitting always right above it. And let's say I record a take. This is my take for this section right here. Now that I've recorded it, I can just simply move it down. Or using the nudge feature, I could just simply press two and move it down. That's why it was so important for me to create that because I use the nudge up and down a lot. So that works really well, it's really easy, but I'm actually gonna take this a step further. What we can do with this method is actually combine our editing and our tracking kind of into one simple step. So obviously once we put this track down onto the actual bass track, we're gonna have to cut these overlaps. And that's where sound on sound was kind of a pain in the ass in Sonar. Because sometimes when you're trying to edit, it gets really difficult to find these overlap points and it just kind of slowed me down sometimes, especially when they're really close in one small section. So we're gonna eliminate that in Studio One by doing our editing and moving the track down all in one step. So what we can do is simply just select the region that we wanna move down and then using that nudge feature, press two and it'll put it down into the track below it. And then once we're done, we could simply delete the extra. From there, you can right click the track, go to audio and then create auto fades, which will automatically put the fade in and out on that clip. But once again, we're gonna take that a step further. So if we go back up into the macro organizer and then find the macro uh, that we created before, nudge selection down, and then with fades. So if we open this, same exact commands we had before, but I've added create crossfades at the end. So instead of a regular two, it's control two. So what we're gonna do is just select the part we want to move down, control two, and now I've moved the track down and applied crossfades to the surrounding clips all in one step. From here, I can just go back and delete the extra audio and boom, that portion of bass is completely edited and ready to go. Obviously, this is kind of a quick uh, choppy example, but you get the point. So at first, the lack of sound on sound was really difficult for me and a hard time getting around that. But once I figured out this workflow, I actually just found that I like it a lot better and it's a lot faster for me because I feel like I'm doing more at once, which is always good. Next is grouping tracks together. So for doing things like volume changes and mute and solo record all at once for multiple tracks, Sonar had a quick grouping setup. So all you had to do was select your multiple tracks, hold control and make your changes. In Studio One, it's even easier. So you just select your tracks and you don't have to hold anything. Just make your changes to anything you want and it will apply it to all of the tracks at once. Next, we have copying plugins, which again is a lot easier in Studio One. In Sonar, you had to hold control and then drag the plugin to the track you wanted. But in this case, all you do is just simply click the plugin, drag it to a new track and it's copied. That's it. Now you can actually take this a step further with grouping. So the cool thing is you can actually copy one plugin to multiple tracks all at once. So let's say on these two blank tracks, I wanted to put virtual mix rack on both of them. What you do is select both of those tracks and then simply drag virtual mix rack onto one of them and it will copy them to both. Now, as you can see, virtual mix rack is on both tracks. All right, next let's talk about the pro channel. So we all loved the pro channel in Sonar but unfortunately that does not exist in Studio One. It does not come with a built-in channel strip of any kind. It has a plugin that's a channel strip, but there's nothing directly integrated into the console. But they do have something called microviews, and what that is is if you have a PreSonus included effect like the Gate or the Pro EQ, any one of the stock plugins, it actually comes with a simplified version of the plugin that you can open in the mixer. So if you just simply click on each of these plugins, it'll open a small simplified version for you to then control in the mixer. Even the EQ, you can drag and move around bands in here, you can use a mouse wheel to adjust the cue, and you can do everything you need to within these little simplified versions inside of the mixer. Same goes with the compressor, the chorus, the reverb, you can have spectrum analyzers in here. There's a lot of stuff you can do with these micro views. So while it's not the pro channel, it's pretty similar in my opinion, and I feel like it works really, really well. So that's really cool to have in Studio One. Next, let's talk about MIDI. So I am not a huge, huge MIDI user. I mainly do simple stuff like some orchestra or drum programming. So none of this is gonna be like crazy MIDI techniques, but there's a couple things that were really weird for me to get used to. 
The first one is selecting all of the MIDI events inside of one note. So the way I usually program my drums is I program them all at one velocity and then I go back and humanize them later. I did this in Sonar by selecting all of the events in that note using a Cal script and then humanizing them and then fine tuning it later. In this case I would just use the humanize feature inside of Studio One. But what I need to do first is select all of the events inside of this C1, so all of my kick drums. All I had to do in Sonar was just simply click on the note and it would select all of them, but it doesn't do that here, it just simply plays the note. So instead, hold control and then click and it will select all of the notes in this event. So now every kick note is selected, I can right click and then humanize it from here. Next is the MIDI scale. By default, Studio One ships with 0 to 100 on the MIDI scale, so it's 0 being nothing and then 100% being the hardest possible velocity. Uh, that is super weird. It still works just as well, but I just don't like it. Now you can actually change that. As long as you have the automation open for the velocity, you can just right click on the scale on the left hand side and then select MIDI. That will change it from 0 to 100 back to the more familiar 0 to 127. Next we have the zooming. So zooming is incredibly intuitive in Studio One. I never got into any crazy mouse scrolling zooming inside of Sonar. I don't even know if they have it, but I know they have it in Studio One and it works beautifully. So you have a couple options here. If you hold control and use a mouse wheel, it'll adjust the track height so you can make them taller or shorter if need be. Next you have control and shift. Using the mouse wheel, it'll zoom in on whatever location your mouse is at. And last we have shift, which will move you forward or backward in the timeline. So if we hold shift and move the mouse wheel up, that goes to the left. And then if we move it down, it goes to the right. So the zooming is really intuitive here. You can zoom all around the track without ever having to click on anything, which is really, really cool in Studio One. And this has become a incredibly important part of my workflow uh, in the month that I've had it. It's amazing how fast I now rely on this zooming feature. And that's all I have for you today, guys. Like I said, some of these functions are a bit smaller, like the copy and paste and maybe the uh, drag to select functions, but then you have the nudge and the sound on sound, which are kind of bigger, especially in my workflow. But luckily, Studio One has some workarounds. So that's really nice to see. So far, I'm really liking Studio One, and to anybody maybe thinking about switching from Sonar, I would definitely give it a shot. They have a 30-day trial on the PreSonus website. It's a really great DAW, it's a lot of fun. There's so much awesome stuff in it, so I would definitely recommend at least trying it out. I'm definitely considering a part two to this video because I do have some ideas for some other topics, so let me know what you guys think down in the comments, if you liked it, if this stuff helped you out, and let me know if you wanna see a part two to this video. And on that note, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. There's new videos every single week and you don't wanna miss any content. Once again, thank you so much for watching. My name is David, and I'll see you next time.